get started. If everyone will make their way to their seats. We have a few announcements that we need to make. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good to see everybody here this Sunday morning. I do want to make a few quick announcements. Uh, one, it concerns our social media wall. And I know this is not for everybody, but uh, for those of you who are into social media, just as a way to really do outreach uh, for our church through the means of social media, uh, we have a wall set up in our um, coffee room where we were taking pictures for our church directory and Miss Peggy will be back there after church and if you'll bring your phone she will take a picture of you or a picture of you and your husband or wife or your family ever how you want to do it and she has these placards that are back there they're going to be blank though and it basically just says I'm thankful for and this is Thanksgiving so we're doing uh, thankfulness theme so what you would do is you'd put I'm thankful for my husband my wife my children whatever it might be the Lord uh, and you put that on there you'll hold it up she'll take your picture now the part that I'm still trying to figure out and y you can help me especially our younger people can help me with this but it's this little symbol right here that I call a number sign and uh, some people call it a pound sign, but our younger generation call this a hashtag, okay? So what you'll do is you'll put, when you post online that picture that, you, that Peggy takes for you on your phone, you will put hashtag number pound, whatever you want to call it, FBC Jewett in the subject line. And, uh, and what that will do is it will pull all these pictures from all this together into one page so that we can find those pictures and in the world we'll see your picture uh, online at First Baptist Church of Jewett. Uh, I put on mine having a blast at First Baptist Church Jewett or I'm having a blast at pound having a blast at hashtag First Baptist Jewett, this FBC Jewett. So any way you want to do that, we're going to have some fun with that. You're going to see this more and more. We're going to do it at Christmas time. We'll do it again at Valentine, Easter, you, you name it. But you can take your pictures any way you'd like and post them online. Just be pleasant and nice, okay, when you, when you do that. All right, uh, let me make a couple other announcements. Uh, Israel Relief Fund, we're still taking collections for that. If you would just uh, put on your check uh, in the bottom left-hand side, Israel Relief, we'll make sure that money gets to where it needs to, to go to. So don't forget about that. Tonight, we have our church business meeting where we'll be voting in our 2024 budget. So uh, plan on being there. We'll have a light meal just before the service tonight at 6 o'clock across the street in our Family Life Center. And let's see, what else? We wanted to say something about our community Thanksgiving uh, meal that is coming up this Thursday night, I believe, yes, yeah, 6 o'clock at the Jewett Civic Center. We have not participated in this since COVID hit, so this is our first year really fully coming back and having this community event. I think Miss Cynthia is going to say a word about that real quick. So if you would, Cynthia, grab a mic. Check. There I am. Okay. So I was just talking to Beth. I know Beth has gotten together some people to bring food. So that's awesome. Um, are we good on that now, Beth? Pretty good on that? Okay. And that we have several people who are set up to come um, and serve the meals. We're going to do that differently this year. Instead of having people go through the line, we're going to have the, uh, some volunteers to fix plates and bring them out to the people. So I'm excited about that because that's another way that we can literally serve. And there's been several that have volunteered for that. We might, um, might could use some more, but I think we're pretty good on that. One of the things that we have not gotten anybody saying that they're willing or able or available to do yet is, as far as I know, because I haven't heard from anybody, is set up chairs ahead of time. And we're planning on maybe doing that on Monday or Tuesday. 
So if you're available for that, let me know, and we can get together a group to help set up chairs ahead of time in the Civic Center, and I can communicate that with um, Christy Vandegrift and uh, set up a time for that. Um, also, if you're available like in the morning or early afternoon on Thursday, um, they're, they're going to just be meeting up there at the Civic Center, probably like in the kitchen or whatever, to prepare the food ahead of time. Um, I forget what all they're actually preparing there, but I know that the, they will welcome volunteers that day as well. Um, so let me know if you're interested in any of that. We're excited about it. It's going to be awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Cynthia. All right. So y'all be sure, and if you can, if you can help, then uh, see Miss Cynthia, and she'll get you plugged in on that. Let's all stand to our feet, turn to someone, and greet them as we continue our service this morning. clouds kings and kingdoms will bow down and every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise for who can stop the lord almighty our god is the lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him the gates make way before the king of kings the god who comes to save is here to set the captives free for who can stop the lord almighty our god is the lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before the lion Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Amen. If you would make your way back to your seats, we'll sing through this chorus one more time as we get ready to worship the Lord together. Let's sing together. Our God is the lion. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before the Lion. Well, as all of you know, yesterday we celebrated Veterans Day, and we would like this morning to recognize our veterans that are with us, um, or those who, um, maybe some that are 
not here, they're serving elsewhere, and you want to stand in their place, that would be fine too. But I want to recognize all our veterans. So if you would just stand up wherever you might be right now. Veterans? Okay, amen. Y'all continue to stand. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your service. God bless you. You can be seated. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you for the day you've given us, God. And as we gather here on this day, Lord, today after our nation observes Veterans Day, God, uh, we thank you for our men and women who have served our nation, Lord, and protected our nation. God, to give us the freedoms that we have to even come and worship you. And Lord, uh, in the day and time that we live, Lord, we know how important they were and are in And Lord, we have many that are continuing to serve uh, all over the world, and we just pray for them this morning, and pray for their families, Lord, and we just thank you so much uh, for what they have done for us. And Lord, um, as we gather together as well, Lord, we want to turn our attention and our sights toward heaven, and Lord, we thank you for what you have done for us, God, and we thank you for Jesus Christ, and we thank you that, Lord, He not only died for our sins, but rose from the dead. And thank you so much that uh, Christ is alive and well today. And God, I just pray that uh, you would just begin to work in the hearts and lives of every person that's here. And uh, I pray, God, that uh, you would meet and take care of every need that's represented, especially those that don't know you, Lord. I pray that you'd speak to their hearts this morning. And Lord, we'll praise you for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. We are glad that you're here to worship with us today. Um, We're just going to sing, start with an old song, but it's got a little bit of a modern twist. It's got a, a new chorus to it called Come Thou Almighty King. So if you're able to, please stand with us as we sing and worship to the Lord. Come now, Almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father all glorious, or all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come now, incarnate word, gird on thy mighty soul. And give thy word success, spirit of holiness, on us descend, and your power of amazing love flows throughout eternity. You are glorious, with us glorious, in us glorious, everything. glorious everything to the great one in three eternal praise as be now evermore thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see and to eternity love and adore and your power glorious, with us glorious, in us glorious, everything. And your power of amazing love flows throughout eternity. You are glorious, with us glorious, in us glorious, 
Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen. If you'd like, you may be seated as we continue to worship. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou art, thou my best heart, 
turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the
this morning. Hey, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and look with me to the book of Mark, chapter 10. We'll be in Mark, chapter 10. We'll be looking at a story that probably uh, many of you are familiar with, and it relates to blind Bartimaeus. We're going to be talking about that today in the book of Matthew, and talking about uh, this event that took place. Uh, Matthew mentions that there were two blind men by the road. Then we come over to the book of Luke, and Luke mentions one person, but does not give his name. And then over in the book of Mark that we're going to be looking at here in just a few minutes, Mark actually names Barnabas, the son of Timaeus. And uh, it's interesting that that happens because this is the first time in all of the book of Mark and all the miracles that have been named, that the person who was healed was actually named. And uh, I find that real interesting. Now, we, you may find others that were referred to by their family name, but you don't hear their proper name. But we do hear in the book of Mark, and clearly, I think Mark is bringing focus on this one gentleman because Jesus had a lot to teach the people that were around him, including his disciples, uh, that had to do with the fact that uh, blind that Bartimaeus was clearly blind, but uh, also he wanted to teach them a spiritual lesson from this. So I want you to look with me in just a few minutes at this passage concerning blind Bartimaeus. And that's what I've titled the message this morning, simply Blind Bartimaeus. Um, you know, as we look at this, I'm always fascinated by what blind people, especially in our day and time, are able to do and what they're able to accomplish. One of the, I was reading this week that one of the most celebrated sports heroes in the state of Alabama <laughs> uh, was uh, uh, a man by the name of Charles Boswell. You remember, you remember him? Yeah, y'all probably went to school together, right? No. <laughs> okay. But Charlie Boswell. Uh, Charlie was blinded in World War II by helping uh, one of his buddies uh, whose tank was on fire. And as a result of his injuries, caused blindness for, for Charlie. Uh, he had always been a great athlete uh, in Alabama. But uh, once he was injured in the war, he took up golf. So here we are, a man that can't see, who became a golfer. As a matter of fact, Boswell won the National Blind Golf Championship 16 times, once shooting a score of 81. Uh, truly an amazing feat for someone who is blind. But in 1958, Charlie came to Fort Worth, Texas um, to receive a coveted Ben Hogan Award for golf. Uh, Mr. Hogan agreed to play a round of golf with, with Charlie uh, at that event. Um, Charlie said to Ben Hogan, he said, hey, would you like to play for money? And uh, Char 
Charlie made this statement to Mr. Hogan, and um, Mr. Hogan says, well, Charlie, that wouldn't be exactly fair, and I don't think that would look good if I played a blind man. So Charlie responded and said, come on, Mr. Hogan, are you afraid to play, play a blind golfer? So uh, Hogan said, uh, you're, you're, pretty, you're pretty competitive, okay, we'll play together. And, uh, he, and then, then Charlie went on to say, let's play for money. And uh, he says, really? He says, well, how much? He says, $1,000 a hole. And that's 18 holes. That's uh, $18,000. So it's quite a challenge. Hogan said, that's a lot. How many strokes do you want me to give you? Boswell said, no strokes. I'll play you heads up golf. Hogan said, Charlie, I can't do it. What would people think of me playing a blind man? To which Boswell smiled and he said, don't worry, Mr. Hogan. Our tea time is tonight at midnight. <laughs> In our text today, we're going to see that Jesus healed a blind man, but there's also something I think that we'll find that's far worse than physical blindness. So if you would, let's stand together as we read what Mark's gospel has to say. Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 46. The Bible says, Now they came to Jericho, and as they went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat on the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he cried, cried out and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still, and he commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he's calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and he came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and he said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I, might, I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight, and he followed Jesus on the road. Would you pray with me? Father, I pray that you'd bless the reading of the word today. And God, I pray that you would open our eyes, that Lord, we might see clearly, Lord, the things that you see. And Lord, for those who are here, Lord, who are blinded, who don't know you, I pray, God, that you'd remove the scales from their eyes that they might see their need for Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you would just take complete control of all that's said and done here today. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, what can we learn from this story about the blind beggar in the encounter that he had with Jesus? First of all, look at the blind beggar in the setting. It was a place called Jericho and uh, this last year, we had an opportunity of going to Jericho. It's the first time we got to do that. And, uh, but it was not the same Jericho that, um, that, that we know of, the ancient Jericho from the Old Testament. This is the new Jericho. This Jer- the Jericho where, or the ancient Jericho would have been a little bit south of where Jericho is today. But uh, you might recall the ancient Jericho, though, from reading in the Old Testament. We're told that Israel crossed over the River Jordan about 1,400 years before this event. And uh, Joshua and the Israelites were told that they walked around the walls of Jericho. And on the seventh day, they walked around these walls seven times. And then the trumpet was, he, they blew the trumpets, the people shouted, and the walls came tumbling down. You remember that? And they destroyed that old city, Jericho. And that, that city was never rebuilt, but they have found some of the remains of it. But then there was a, there's a new Jericho that we, we got to visit in, the same Jericho that would have been in existence at the time of Christ and when this event took place. But there was a great crowd that were gathered there as Jesus came into Jericho. And uh, there was not only a great crowd, but uh, there was the disciples, there was Jesus, and there was blind Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus was a beggar sitting by the roadside. Now, I suspect that he had been there so long and been at the roadside so many times that people probably just ignored him. I mean, he was probably not even seen uh, as he sat there begging for money. I'm sure people were getting accustomed to seeing him sitting, sit around for 
uh, and begging like he did. But he had no other means for survival. I mean, they didn't have the, the safety nets we have today. They didn't have the government programs or anything like that that could have helped him along uh, at that time. As a matter of fact, if you were blind or if you had some kind of ailment like this, you were generally an outcast in society. And many and even the religious people and the Jews thought that perhaps you had done something wrong, you had offended God, and that God was punishing you as a result. So he was as low on the economic and social spectrum as a man could be, barely existing. People did not see him. Even though he begged, they probably rarely heard him or even spoke to this man. So you kind of get the picture of desperation that we see there. But you can see by his desperation and his persistent, his persistence as Jesus passed by that he knew that this might be his only chance, that this might be the only chance to turn things around in his life. No doubt, I mean, Jesus is famous by this time. Everybody knew about this man, Jesus. And so they're following him. They're coming to him. There are crowds everywhere. And he hears from the crowds that Jesus is coming down the road. And he knew that this might be the only chance to speak to Jesus or to even have Jesus touch him and give him his sight. You know, as I thought about this that this week, I thought, you know, there may be people that come into our church, even this Sunday, that, uh, that, that God has given you another opportunity, perhaps even the last opportunity that you ever get to meet Him and to come into a relationship with Him. Now, I hope that's not true. I hope everyone in here has a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, but I don't, don't want to assume that, it, that that is true. But might I say to you today that Today is the day of salvation, that today that God has given us, given you the opportunity to see Him and to meet Him. He's given you this chance, this one more chance. So this man, though, he wanted to touch Jesus. He wanted Jesus to do something for him. The condition of those around Jesus is interesting. We know that the disciples and the crowd could see Jesus. They crowded, they crowded around him to see what he might say, what he might do. They wanted to get close to this miracle man, this man, Jesus. We know that Bartimaeus was blind, but I want to suggest to you that he was not the only person in the crowd that was blind. And that's what I really want us to focus on here today. If you look back with me, you can kind of see what I'm talking about as Jesus teaches his own disciples in Mark chapter 8, verses 17 and 18. The Bible says this, But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason? Because you have no bread. You remember we covered this? Uh, do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes to see, what did he say? He says, you do not see. Jesus has been teaching them. He's trying to bring his disciples along. They're learning more and more, and they're starting to gain more and more understanding as to what is going to take place, but they still don't see it. Someone said that the blind man is the least blind in this story. I found that interesting. Secondly, this morning, look at the blind beggar and the miracle. Bartimaeus knew Jesus could do miracles, so he cried out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Now, I heard one preacher illustrate this in this way. He said, get the picture. Bartimaeus is crying out to the Lord Jesus, and what's happening? The disciples and the crowd are saying, shh, be quiet, be quiet. Don't you know who this is? I mean, they're, they're putting themselves between Bartimaeus and Jesus. They're trying to get him to be quiet. He's a nuisance. He's a, uh, I, I would say probably in the community they were ashamed of this person. And so he's saying, be quiet, be quiet. And then all of a sudden the Bible says Jesus stops in the crowd. He hears the man, Jesus, son of David. You know, that's the only time, the first time that anybody ever addressed Jesus as 
son of David? Hey, they maybe perhaps when he was a little boy, his mom took him to the synagogue and he, he, heard, the, he heard what was read during the, in, the, in the synagogue. And, and the Bible says that over in the Old Testament, that in Isaiah 35, then the eyes of the blind shall see, shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, in reference to the Messiah. So maybe he recognizes him. He's the only one, even though he can't physically see, he understands that this must be him. This must be the Messiah. So Jesus stops. His ears perk up. Somebody just referred to me as the son of David. And Jesus says to the blind man, no. To the people that are telling him, tell him, shh, be quiet. He looks at them and he says, Go tell him to come here. So I can imagine. They walk over to him and says, Well, um, as we were saying, <laughs> he wants to see you. <laughs> he wants you to come to him. So they bring him over to Jesus. Oh, happy day. I mean, here's this blind man that nobody is, has anything to do with. He is the reject of the society. Those who could see that day were more blind than Bartimaeus, it would seem. They bring him to Jesus. Man, I can, I can, if, I, if I could get into his shoes, you can almost feel the excitement as he, because he knows he's already heard what Jesus has done, and now he wants to see me. Man, the excitement is brewing. This blind beggar believed that Jesus Christ had the power to open his eyes. And now he was about to have that come to pass. He recognized that Jesus had the ability to help him. That's interesting. How about you? Do you believe that Jesus can help you? Do you believe that Jesus Christ can help that wayward child? that you have, that wayward grandchild that you have? Do you believe that Jesus can resolve family issues in your family? Do you believe that Jesus can reach that one person that you think there is no hope for? I think sometimes, and I have to watch myself because sometimes it may be true of me as well, I'm, and I was asking myself this question, how many times do I get in the way of people seeing Jesus? How many times do I get in the way of people coming to Jesus rather than, than helping people come to Him? Lord, help me remove the blinders. Help me to see what you see, God. Lord, help me to slow down long enough in life to see that there are people that need you. And they want Him. And if people, if I would direct, direct them to Him, He could open their eyes that they might see. Do you believe Jesus can do that? I believe that He can. I believe that He did. I believe that He will. What happened? Jesus stood still and He commanded them to call Bartimaeus over to Him. Do you remember the disciples rebuking people for bringing children to Jesus? What did He say? Do not forbid them. Are there people in our own lives that need Jesus, the blind man knew his only hope was Jesus Christ. So he casually walked over to him. <laughs> the Bible puts it this way. He threw the cloth off of him. I believe he was excited. Now, I, don't, I don't know that he ran. He's blind, okay? And there's a crowd. But I believe that he allowed those people to get him over to Jesus just as quick as he possibly could. He followed Jesus. You know what? The Bible says that he was immediately healed. After he answered the question that Jesus asked him, he was immediately healed. What, what happened right after that? When you look down at the last verse, it says, and followed Jesus on the road. So he received healing and then he began to follow Jesus. Listen, if you're not following Jesus, you don't belong to Jesus. But you see, the, this man's life was changed, radically changed. He not only received physical vision 
but he received a new life. He understood that, that Jesus was the Messiah. He, in that moment, if you will, he was born again. He was spiritually renewed. He, he gave his life to Christ. And what happened? He began to follow him. That's what believers do. That's what believers do. They, they follow him. You see, when you believe, a miracle takes place and you're born again. You become a new person. And everyone that believes and is born again experiences the greatest miracle of all. It's not receiving a physical sight, but it's spiritual renewal. It's spiritual, something that takes place within us when we come to Christ. And I don't know, but there may be someone here today who is spiritually blind and God wants to give you sight and he will give you sight he will heal your spiritual blindness and he will save your very soul the greatest miracle that can ever happen is when we trust Christ you know what folks you're going to hear me saying this a lot in the day and time we live in but Jesus is coming soon <laughs> he's coming back real soon if you hadn't noticed all the signs are out there. I mean, the, prof the prophetic signs are there. Jesus Christ is coming soon. The question is, is when he comes, where will you be? Will you be ready for him to come? And that leads me to my last point. Look at the blind beggar and his faith. His faith in Jesus is what changed him. Jesus said, go your way. Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and he went on his way. No, he didn't. He followed Jesus. He followed him, we're told, on the road. He followed Jesus because he wanted to be with Jesus. James tells us about faith, that faith without works is what? It's dead. You see, he was spiritually born. He was not only received his physical sight, but he put his belief in the Lord Jesus, and he began to follow him. So maybe you're sitting here today and you're thinking, well, what is faith? What kind of faith are you talking about? Because I believe there are a lot, a lot of different kinds of faith. Let me talk a little bit about that. I want you to know this, that faith is not a head knowledge. God gave me the opportunity just this morning to talk to someone who seemed to have a little bit of head knowledge about Jesus. But when asked the question, if you were to die today, where would you go? No idea. No idea. You see, that's not the kind of faith that I'm talking about. That's not the kind of faith that, that we're talking about here. We're not talking about just a head knowledge. Let me ask you something. Do you believe that George Washington lived? Probably do. Do you believe that Abraham Lincoln lived? Yeah, probably. Ronald Reagan? Probably. You, you believe that. And you know, outside of the knowledge that we have of them, and maybe we gain some, we learn some things about them that help us in life today, they really don't have a lot of impact on our life. By the same way, there's a lot of people that know about Jesus, but he has very little impact on their life. They just have the head knowledge. They just know who he was and what he did. The Bible tells us this, and this might interest you, that the devils, the demons, believe in him. They believe and the Bible says, and they tremble. There won't be any demons in heaven, I promise you. And there won't be people in heaven who have a head knowledge of what Jesus did. See, there is, there is a difference. Well, what is faith? Well, let me talk about faith a little further. Faith is not temporary. You see, when you get sick, what do you do? You cry out to God, ask Him for healing. He provides the healing. And that's all the time you need your faith because he healed you and it's over with. You may have a financial crisis and you call out to God and you say, Lord, help me. And we exercise faith and God provides. Perhaps he provides. Driving a car, flying across the country, Lord God, help me get to my destination. We cry out to him. We exercise faith. I call that temporary faith. That's not saving faith. That's not the kind of faith that we're talking about. The saving faith is when we learn the facts about Jesus we agree with the facts about Jesus, and then we do what this blind man did. We cry out to God and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord and my Savior. It's when I stop doing everything I've been trying to do, and by the way, this person I spoke to this morning that right away told me they were baptized. There's, listen, baptism is not going to save anybody. Baptism is not going to get a soul to heaven. No, Jesus is the only one that can do that. He He's our only hope. So we must put our faith in Him. Blind Bartimaeus, folks, he saw more clearly than anybody. He re 
received his physical sight, but I want you to know something. The greatest thing that happened to blind Bartimaeus is he began to follow Jesus. He put his faith in him. You see, when you stand before God one day and God says to you, if he does, if he were to say to you, Lord, why should I let you into my heaven? The only answer that we can give him is Jesus. Because of what your son did for me. He saved my soul. And you see, that's where our hope is. Blind Bartimaeus, he understood this. He understood that Jesus Christ was his only hope. You see, putting our faith in Jesus is not just some decision we made one day and we joined the church, walked the aisle and said, yeah, that's just another thing I'm going to do in my life. No, it's giving our heart and our life to Jesus Christ fully, 100%, and we completely rely in him. And by the way, if you know him, you will follow him. If you know him, you will follow him. Nobody will have to beg you to do that. No, if you know him, you're going to do what he asks you to do. You're going to follow him and go in the direction he wants you to go. Blind Bartimaeus, I don't think. He, he, he probably was there in Jerusalem when they crucified our Lord. But I don't think blind Bartimaeus ever turned back. And now I want to quit calling him blind because it's just not so. He is alive and he can see clearly. He's with the Lord. And you can have that same assurance today. I believe that there are some that need to turn their life over to Christ this morning. And we want to give you an opportunity to do that. But I also believe that there's some people in this congregation, some people that are sitting here right now today, that you have allowed the world to creep into your life and say to you that I need the Lord, I know i got a lot going on in my life, and you've put a lot of other things in front of where God needs to be in your life. And there's some of you today that needs God to remove the blinders and help you see clearly so that you can follow Him afresh and anew, starting right now, this morning. And I want to encourage you to do that. Would you bow your heads with me? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, and Christians are praying. Just as God healed blind Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus began to follow him. That's what God wants for you, and you will never live life to its fullest until you begin to walk with him. Some of you this morning need to renew your relationship with the Lord. You need to say to God today, Lord, help me to see what you see. Help me to remove the things from my life that I need to remove that, Lord, I might see clearly. But then there are some who are here today you're lost, you've never trusted Christ, you've never repented of your sin and asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior, why not right now? Why not today? Like blind Bartimaeus on that Jericho road, he thought, this might be my last chance. And who knows, this could be our last chance. Why not come today? Father in heaven, we commit this invitation time to you. God, you know the need of every heart represented here today. Lord, remove the blinders and help us to see clearly what you see. Lord, about our own lives. And then, Lord, help us to see what you see in others around us. God, I pray that we would do everything we can to bring men, women, boys, and girls to you. Lord, I pray for that lost person who's sitting here today. Lord, they've come today, and God uh, had no idea what was going to happen, but Lord, you are here, and I pray, God, that today, at this opportune time, they would come to you. For it's in Christ's name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand with me as we stand, as we begin to sing? Would you come right now as God leads? Won't you come? Come on. Oh, soul, are you weak?